Hey guys, this is Pablo with Meditation Amsterdam and since I'm in Guatemala, I thought it was time for one of these driving videos that I used to make in the past. And I'm driving down to Lake Atitlan, uh, one of my most favorite places in the world to escape the uh, buzz of the city. And um, today I wanted to uh, do some reflections on the ego and what a nasty position it uh, we're in when our um, identity is enmeshed with the uh, egoic uh, functions of the mind. Now to start with it's probably handy to rehash <clears throat> this notion that the ego begins to form uh, very early on after we're born and it is formed out of a, uh, a rift that happens in the mind which takes place uh, due to uh, our contact with our mother in which our mind comes to create a split in itself a split between subject and object or self and other in which uh, the mother is the first other and once this is done the mind um, has a self image and it has a myriad of uh, images of the other or others and therefore otherness is born but self is also born. Um, and um, part of what's interesting about this is that the psychological self that is born through this process in the, of the mind, um, that birth takes place after our um, biological birth, after our physical birth, uh, which is a dead giveaway of the fact that we are not our egoic um, personality, our egoic identity. But of course, over time, uh, this uh, egoic uh, process of the mind of self and other and of objects in mind becomes uh, very nuanced, very complex. And it also becomes, um, or rather is a uh, outgrowth of a fear response. And our personality starts to become ever more sophisticated to try and procure uh, safety and pleasure from our uh, parents and from our environment. So you could say that the ego is really a, uh, a fear-based mechanism that um, is essentially driven by um, a kind of self-reflection and separation feeling um, and the notion that we need to um, constantly procure uh, safety and that we need to continue to be as a psychological self. So it's really a, a fear-driven mechanism. And um, one of the little catchphrases that has been playing in my mind to uh, remember this notion or to try to explain it is that there is no feeling of self without an accompanying feeling of self-concern. In other words, to self is to self-concern, uh, if, if we consider self as a verb or selfing. Um, another way to say it would be that the, the full name of I am is I am afraid. Right? There is no self without self-concern immediately popping up uh, together with that feeling of separateness. And <clears throat> what this does on a very fundamental level, though we may not feel it consciously, because a lot of these mechanisms are in fact pushed to the subconscious mind so that we can live a, 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 a decent or semi-decent life, is... Um, so this is all happening in the background. We tend not to notice it too much, but it is there nonetheless. And it puts us in a very, it puts us in an impossible bind. So long as we're identified with that egoic fear-based mechanism. And the bind is as follows. You can be fundamentally afraid and therefore you are even afraid of fear itself so that the, the ego as a fear fear based mechanism becomes afraid even to look at itself right so it's it's just fear and fear bec because it's reflective you self reflect there's a sense of self then fear becomes fear of fear and so on 
that's where anxiety and panic attacks and these things eventually spiral out of control for certain people. And so, so that's one choice that you have is to stay in egoic identity and therefore be afraid. And not only that, but be afraid of fear and therefore be in a complete um, state of um, a lockdown in, in a sense, psychological lockdown that is. Um, and the other alternative, which is equally ugly, is to confront the fear and essentially face psychological annihilation, <clears throat> to not be. And both these options are an impossible choice. Right, so to live in fear, even if it is subconscious, but it's you, you can you can feel it. It doesn't take a lot for that fear to come to the surface. Or you can face the annihilation of your psychological self, which to you, because you are completely identified with that psychological self, feels like annihilation. Period. Right, to die or to be utterly, utterly afraid is the double bind of the ego. Um, and so, so long as that is the primary um, way of our mind to operate, we are in an impossible situation. It's a lose-lose situation, therefore a double bind. Now, of course, um, this is um, not always as obvious as uh, as it's being explained right now because as I said the ego through its own fear of fear pushes a lot of things into uh, the subconscious it just uh, represses a lot of things that we don't even know about ourselves and um, I have also visited uh, the notion that even though they are repressed things in our environment keep poking at us and making us feel either sad or angry or stressed or afraid. And therefore, uh, there's a fundamental narcissism in which we are constantly trying to procure uh, that validation and that safety and that pleasure from the environment. Let's all these things in the subconscious start to bubble up to the surface, which is exactly what happens to people when they begin to meditate. So uh, I made a video called uh, that we are all a Manchurian narcissist. Uh, in case you didn't watch The Manchurian Candidate, it's a movie where a guy has been hypnotically programmed to, to assassinate when a certain keyword is given to him, right? So it's a dormant killer. And so our fundamental egoic narcissism is also this sort of dormant killer that when poked in a stressful situation will immediately uh, make us respond in a, in a narcissistic and egoic way. So uh, part of the, the idea of these videos is in fact bring this notion to the foreground so that we start to observe ourselves and, and notice this better. All good and great, uh, <clears throat> then the question you might uh, then ask is, so what can I do about it? Well, the first, things to, first thing to notice is that this double bind is only a trap or is, it, it only has you when you are identified with the egoic uh, sense of identity yeah with the egoic uh, processes of the mind therefore the double bind can be completely dismantled by undermining the mechanism of identification with the ego see the ego is not a problem the ego is a tool it's a mechanism for obtaining procuring uh, making sure that we're physically safe that we are psychologically sound and that we can um, navigate our uh, physical and social environments. The problem is the identification with that process and confusing our um, what we fundamentally are with that mental process. So in order to escape the double bind, you cannot choose for self-annihilation or living in fear. It's an impossible choice, but both, it's a lose-lose situation. The real choice at hand is not to identify with the egoic self that you believe yourself to be, which traps you in the double bind. And um, in order to do that, you then start to follow the practices that lead to the dissolution of the egoic identity. Um, and to recap 
basics of what those are, you want to start by uh, practicing a lot of embodiment and learn how to self-regulate your nervous system in the face of distress. And the reason for that is <clears throat> this will create a, uh, uh, an inner container for you to start to bring all the subconscious material to the foreground, to metabolize it, process it. Uh, that's the work of alchemy. To make sure that your nervous system is no longer reacting to uh, fear and being driven by fear by metabolizing that fear or digesting neurologically or psychosomatically digesting that fear. When you do enough of this, the ego becomes a redundant mechanism. And not only that, but the mind starts to become very quiet. And when the mind starts to become very quiet, you begin to notice, wait a second, I thought I was my stream of thoughts. But that stream of thoughts has now ceased. It has uh, become really quiet. And whatever I am is still around. So that means I am not what I thought myself to be. And that's where uh, pure awareness eventually starts to recognize itself. So that's it's the self-realization of the fact that you were never the egoic mechanism in the first place, that you had confused your uh, innermost or, or, or truest identity with it uh, through the processes of uh, ego um, development. Uh, which are natural processes in infancy. And so today's video is really about this notion that, um, again, that there is no self that is not self-concerned. That the moment you have a separate identity, that you consider yourself to be a separate self, self-concern will arise at the very same time. And self-concern is essentially fear, right? It's, it's, is this worrisome, what's going to happen to me uh, type of um, um, notion in the back of your mind. And, um, <clears throat> you know, you, you start to be completely driven by making sure that you turn out all right and that things turn out all right. Uh, never noticing that this self-concern mechanism is based on an identity that is not really what you are. Yeah. Um, that doesn't take away from the idea that self-concern might be a healthy thing uh, in several instances, that you need to take care of your finances, your health, and all these kind of things. But the question is, do you need to be identified with the egoic mode of the mind um, for things to go well? Or is it a, uh, a, a an unnecessary burden um, that we carry with us? So um, I'm very curious to hear your thoughts on this one, as usual. And um, I'll be back with more videos pretty soon. If you think that this, con this content is valuable to others, then your liking, your sharing, and subscribing makes the channel more visible to others. And it's also super motivating to me. I'll be back with the next video pretty soon. Cheerio. Have a good one. Bye-bye.